Okay, so uh, I'd like to call the, to order a city council special meeting for January 19th. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Dean? Here. Leo? Lewis? I know she's here because she just sent me a message. I think she's muted. Uh, Let me see if I can unmute. Holly sent an email. She wasn't sure she was going to to be able to join the meeting. She's traveling. Okay. This garn. This garn. There you are. Thank you. Peterson. Yes. Stanton. Yes. Trester. Here. You have a quorum, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as I said, uh, we received a <clears throat> email earlier in the day from uh, Councilperson Leo. Uh, who's traveling, but she will try to make it. So uh, she is absent with prior notice uh, and we'll welcome her to the meeting if she uh, is able to connect with us. Uh, the purpose of today's meeting uh, is an issue that uh, our zoning department has been uh, working on for the past couple of months uh, with uh, our city attorneys relating to uh, the potential uh, of houseboats, which is kind of a broad based term. I think maybe floating homes would be a, a, a better term to use in, in our context today. Uh, and the fact that uh, we have no regulations or ordinances uh, concerning the these types of, of, of uh, homes or vessels or whatever you want to call them. Mr. So, Mayor, uh, is there someone? Public comment? Yeah, I'll, I'll get there, Chris. I'll get there. Okay. All right. So, I just wanted to lay the foundation for the purpose of the meeting and uh, uh, ask our uh, city manager, Karen, if she wants to add this before we get to public comment. Uh, yeah, I would. It is unusual to have a meeting on Tuesday morning. And I wanted to let the public know we did this because if the council decides to enact a moratorium, it needed to make this week's paper. So that's the reason for an unusual daytime special meeting. Uh, did I see Cliff? Is Cliff in attendance? I am, He's Mr. Mayor. This is okay. Cliff Bloom. Can you hear okay. me? Yes, I can. Thank you, Cliff. Great. Uh, so uh, that being said, uh, I'll open the meeting to public comment. This portion of the meeting is uh, allocated for members of public to address the con uh, council on agenda items. Uh, please limit your comments to three minutes. When recognized, uh, identify yourself by name and community of residence. So does anyone wish to address the council this morning? All right, uh, see anything, Aaron? No, sir, I do not. All right, okay. So we'll close the uh, comment, public comment section uh, of the meeting. Uh, there will be an opportunity to address the council later in the meeting on this, this subject uh, or other related subjects. So uh, right now, I guess we'll just turn it over to uh, to Cliff and maybe Cliff, you can give us kind of a, uh, how we got where we're at here. Uh, unless, let me back off. Does Cindy, do you have anything you want to comment on? Our zoning administrator? I don't think so. We did address this with the attorney's office several several weeks ago. I don't remember how many, but um, it's, it's an issue that's come up and there are some concerns. Okay, all right. Uh, Cliff, do you mind kind of uh, taking over here at this stage of the meeting, please? I would, I would be glad to, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone, and feel free to interrupt me at any time, wh whether, Mr. Mayor, you have a comment or a question or any of the uh, city council folks. Um, 
Houseboats are becoming increasingly popular um, among coastal communities. Um, it's amazing how little regulation there is at the state or even the federal level. So um, I think, as was mentioned earlier, um, the city has virtually no regulations regarding houseboats. It's an open question whether they're subject to the building code uh, and the zoning, given that they're offshore and they don't have a permanent foundation. So. Given some of the increased concerns, um, we suggested that the city look at whatever you want to call it, a houseboat ordinance, a floating house ordinance, and so on. But the, the problem is whenever you're dealing with a topic like this, um, if it takes you two months or six months or eight months to come up with an ordinance, um, that's going to be in the public, and people try to, quote, beat the ordinance, close quote. They try to get a vested right before the ordinance goes into effect. Hence, uh, communities around Michigan for a number of years have used moratoriums where they adopt a moratorium ordinance uh, rather quickly that freezes a particular area while the municipality is working on what I call the substantive or the final ordinance. So that was the thought here. And I think it's important to distinguish between what's in front of the council today and what will be in front of the council in the future. Today, this is a strictly a moratorium ordinance that would propose to freeze the status quo for its proposed eight months, but that can be any time period that the uh, council think is, is appropriate, uh, versus the substantive ordinance, which the zoning and planning department will work with us and, and city officials to produce for the council. And then, of course, the council then can chew over that ordinance and uh, adopt it or not adopt it or revise it. So. All the pros and cons, if you adopt this moratorium ordinance, will come out when the final or substantive ordinance is drafted and is made public. So, again, this is strictly a procedural ordinance. Um, the question has come up, should a grandparent um, any existing houseboats? Um, and there are arguments both ways, although this ordinance does not have a penalty section in it. It just prevents... Um, the city from issuing any approvals in the interim. It also states that houseboats can't be used in the interim. So uh, what would a final ordinance look like? And again, ultimately that's up to the city council. Um, some municipalities ban houseboats altogether. Um, others do what I call light, uh, have a light licensing ordinance where they generally allow them with licensing. And then there are other ordinances that are in between where there's regulations that uh, define them, where they can be used, what the standards are, sewage and water requirements, and, and, and so on. Um, for purposes of this uh, uh, moratorium ordinance, we've come up with a definition of, for houseboat, which varies, by the way, dramatically across the country in different ordinances, because we really don't know at this point in time what the final ordinance is going to look like. And we want to make sure that nothing sneaks through that shouldn't sneak through. But I, I think the key is, the, Mr. Mayor, the last part of the definition, which says, which is used or, des, excuse me, which is designed or used primarily for a for living or as a house or domicile rather than for water transport or recreation purposes. And both Jeff Slug and I struggled with the definition because we, we, we wanted it tight enough so nothing would sneak through that shouldn't but not so tight that it, it, it would cover conventionally built and used uh, vessels and boats. So in a nutshell, Mr. Mayor, that's kind of where we are. But again, I, I, I like to stress that this is a procedural ordinance that simply freezes matters. It is not the final substantive ordinance. All right, uh, Cliff, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'll kind of kick off discussion for the, and then pull in uh, council people. Um, the, what we're, we're attempting here is simply to be proactive. We're certainly not looking at uh, prohibiting boats that have living quarters on it, that people stay in them uh, overnight or for long extended period of times. We certainly have boats in our marinas where people, they're their second home. They stay here in the summer and go to Florida or someplace to warmer climates in the, in the winter. Uh, that is not the intent, our, our not in intention. 
uh, but our intention is to be a little proactive regarding these uh, floating homes, uh, barges that are converted to cottage that are not self-propelled, have no motors. Um, and to be honest, with you, I wouldn't, I would be as concerned if we had a normal winter with eight inches of ice and waterways weren't open where one could be coming up the Kalamazoo River. Uh, might be an overreaction, but I, I think when we're talking about preservation of our, our waterfront, it, it, it's important to, to be proactive. Two areas that uh, I have concern, Cliff, and I'd like other council to chime in certainly, would be the length of the uh, moratorium and a, and, and a couple of things under the definitions that kind of cast a, a broad net, I think, in and would be concerned for people who either own houseboats, i.e. a river queen or similar model, or uh, live aboard a boat. Um, so that in the time length, uh, that'd be a concern because eight months would obviously get us into the middle of the summer. And uh, so one question is once, if this was enacted today, how easy would it be down the road for us, say in a week or two weeks to revise it concerning such thing as definitions, concerning such thing as time frame. Uh, can you address those two questions, please? Sure, Mayor, this is, this is Cliff again. The length is any length you want within reason. We're a little concerned if it's much more than eight months. And anyone challenges that the courts might say that's too long. Um, in some ways, this is the, almost the perfect time of the year, other than the fact that it's a, a light winter. You know, obviously, you know, most boats are not in the water, and this is a good time to work on it. But I think probably the minimum you'd want to do would be three months, because uh, even at fairly quick speed, a major ordinance, by the time it's chewed over and adopted, is probably going to be three three months. But again, you, you can uh, rescind it if you pass it, or you can tweak it the same way uh, you would proceed if you adopt it today. Um, and Jeff and I really struggled with the definitions. Um, without that last portion, which is designed to use primarily for living or as a house or domicile rather than for water transport or recreation purposes, um, it would be even more difficult. Now, the problem is you can put a propel propulsion system on a three-story house that floats in the water. So that with the final substantive ordinance, you know, is going to be something that city officials and we are really going to have to look at. And we might have to come up with a fairly sophisticated definition that deals with construction and, and, and so on. So the bottom line is you can make the uh, moratorium any length you want, although less than three months is probably going to be difficult to draft and get a substantive ordinance in effect. Um, the definitions, again, can be tweaked at any time. And I suspect if you do a final substantive ordinance, the definition will probably be modified or different than the one for the, uh, you know, that we proposed in the moratorium ordinance. Okay. Uh, council, uh, questions for the attorney? Mayor? Yes. Scott? Okay, thanks, Mayor. Um, question for the attorney. Um, what about uh, the individuals that currently own slips the various marinas or lease slips to the various marinas that do have vessels that would meet this definition? What, is, what does this mean for their summer if, uh, if this ordinance was to be enacted or this, this moratorium was to be enacted? I'm th I'm thinking Good question, this, Count. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but we, we know that there are um, several vessels that probably have propulsion, but are pro predominantly just floating residences that, that are already at some of the marinas. What does this mean for, for those individuals summer if we put this moratorium in place, people that have been doing this for years? <clears throat> yeah, good, 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 good question. And, and that's something we're going to have to deal with ultimately in the substantive ordinance. But for purposes of this, this ordinance does not have any penalty provision. Um, it, 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 it does say that you can't do it. So um, it could either be left the way it is and just implicitly the city won't enforce it against anyone who lawfully exists or 
I've kind of anticipated this, we could add an exemption that says any houseboat that lawfully existed and was in the Kalamazoo River as of July 1, 2020 is exempt from this moratorium. Now, you might say, well, why July 20, 2020? Well, that's probably, the bu- I assume, the busiest weekend of the summer season when the most boats would go in. And, uh, you know, that's in the past, so someone couldn't, you know, claim they're exempt if it wasn't. But we could put an express exemption in if the council deems that appropriate, a, a grandparent clause. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Chris? Are you there? Did, yes, did you... I am. I had to unmute. First of all, let me apologize, Mayor, for interrupting you. Uh, no, no I, problem. I thought Lauren did a, an excellent job in coming up with a definition there. Um, my question is, would we, if we don't put some kind of penalty in there and just not enforce it, I have a little trouble with that. But I think the whole, the whole idea of, of the, the floating home uh, is definitely something we need to look at. Um, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Yes. Oh, sorry. Go, Lauren. Who was that? Lauren first. Um, you know, obviously, if we we put something, some language in there that talks about boats that already existed. Um, Cindy, this is kind of a question for you. If somebody needed to get their two hundred fifty dollar vacation rental permit, would you not allow that as of now with this moratorium if this passes? Would you say no to the $250 permit that they need to pay to be a VRBO Airbnb? Yes, I, I would. I would also though like to ask Cliff if he sees this as a zoning ordinance or a general police powers ordinance. No, the moratorium is a general police power ordinance, and, and the problem is you can't make it an emergency ordinance and enact it right away and have it effective if you have a penalty. Okay. So that's why there's no penalty provision um, in this. Now, there's all kinds of interesting issues. Um, Cindy, I, I don't know. I, I, I suspect the city's ordinances do not address boats, houseboat or otherwise, as short-term rentals. It Do the ordinances? Not, it does not address it as um, short-term rentals, and it and I'm a little vague on how the building code would apply. And if the substantive ordinance was a zoning ordinance, it would be a little bit different than if it was a general police power. Yeah, I I think that kind of points out the the importance of the final substantive ordinance because we're dealing with an area where it apparently is very unclear whether the building code applies, whether the fire code applies, you know, whether the short-term rental regulations. And I think that just increases the importance of the, you know, what the final ordinance will look like. And another question for Mr. Bloom, is there any legal precedent in Michigan that allows for the restriction of floating houses anywhere else um, in Lakeshore communities? Do we have any legal precedent? You know, it, it, it's interesting. Uh, the answer is no. There, there are actually some old statutes that say cities can regulate houseboats. Um, but it actually is amazing how little, if any, court action, you know, there has been in this area. Now, I think the culture in Michigan boating is a little different than some of the year-round warmer areas like Florida and California, I think houseboats are much more prevalent there and have been for years. And maybe that's why there's such a, a lack of, you know, case law and precedent in Michigan. Yeah, I know in Seattle, they have limited the number of houseboats at this point, but they're at like 560 uh, floating houses, um, but they limited the number, um, but I couldn't find anything in Michigan. Uh, the state has virtually no regulations. Um, and the other thing that if you ultimately move to a substantive ordinance, you might want to look at not only limiting the number, but what areas also do you, you know, does the city want to allow them anywhere on the waterfront or just certain areas or regions? And then this one is for Cindy, just because, you know, um, having a business on the water, I've, you know, dealt with this. What is the city's jurisdiction on anything on the water? 
I am not aware that we have any jurisdiction of anything on the water. It all goes through Eagle, formerly DEQ, and they issue permits for seawalls and docks and um, that type of thing. So the city has some regulation about how long docks can be, but that's about the limit. Can I chime in? This is Cliff again quickly. Sure. You bet. That, that's one of the things that we would look at with a substantive ordinance is whether the city has concurrent jurisdiction out into the water, which we think it does, but we'd want to verify that and without getting all into all the legal technicalities. That's one issue we, we really should look at if there's a substantive ordinance. Now, with that said, even if theoretically the city's jurisdiction ended at the water's edge and we don't believe it does, you would likely still be able to do an ordinance because the, the pier, the dock, the mooring site, the uh, utilities, the parking and so on all would be on dry land. So you might be able to do it indirectly, but that's something that if the city council decides they want a substantive ordinance, we're going to have to look at. Okay. Uh Going. Garnett, did you want to? Yeah, um, so following up on the uh, police ordinance versus a zoning ordinance. So this is a temporary moratorium and as council, we would vote on it. But then in order to get to a permanent moratorium, if you will, does it go back to planning? Does it go back to zone? Where does it go? What's I'm, I'm trying to understand procedurally then because I'm imagining some public hearings and other such things that will probably need to occur. So I'm just kind of looking for what's the process going forward. Mr. Mayor, this is Cliff. Can I respond? You bet, Cliff. I think a lot of these questions you. are being directed towards you. So please do. Okay. Um, this can be done as either a zoning amendment to the zoning ordinance or a police power ordinance, which does not go through the planning commission. It doesn't have to unless you want the planning commission to make recommendations. We would recommend that generally it be done as a regulatory or police power ordinance. Uh, a public hearing is not required, but a public hearing can be done at the option of the council. And again, they can consult with the planning commission. Um, there are a lot of problems. The, the, the zoning regulates more uh, land use and activities. This is more activities. Um, zoning amendments take a lot longer. It is possible that the city might do both. You might have a regulatory ordinance that governs most of it, licensing of houseboats and so on, and then a zoning amendment component if you decide to allow it only in certain areas or zoning districts, but it would be predominantly a, a non-zoning regulatory ordinance. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, any further comment? Ken, do you have anything to chime in with? Um, I do not. My, the questions I had have already been uh, asked and answered. Uh, I, I just say that you know, I'm in favor of moving forward with this. I think the eight month uh, time period is, is uh, um, appropriate. I think that would be the smart way to go. So I'm in support of this. Mr. Mayor, just one, maybe one more yeah. question. Mr. You bet. You bet, Lauren. Go ahead, please. Um, in the moratorium, it talks, the language that's used talks about houseboats shall not be used, moored, or kept outdoors within the city of Saugatuck. And wow, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of different things. Um, when I think of moored, I think of on a ball in the middle of the lake, as opposed to dock. And then kept outdoors, we'll be talking dry dock in, you know, in a parking lot um, used, that seems like a very, um, th that word seems like it's pretty vague. Yeah, the problem is we're, we're trying to potentially um, put our finger in all potential leaks in the dam. We're trying to prevent someone from getting a vested right and then arguing later, hey, you can't preclude me or regulate me so that that's why it's awfully broad is we, we we don't want someone to you know given a warm winter go park it in the middle of the river 
and then argue, hey, I got a vested right because, you know, um, and, and, and again, I think the substantive ordinance will have to be much uh, more specific and crisp and, you know, particular. The problem is we don't know what the ultimate substantive ordinance is going to look like. So, again, this is kind of a temporary freezing of the status quo. And, and there's probably a good argument that the broader this language is, and it's fairly broad, might ar- mitigate for a shorter time period. You know, maybe not eight months, maybe six or five or four or three. If you go for a shorter moratorium and you get near the end of it, it's clear the ordinance will be not, won't be done. You can always amend this ordinance to lengthen the moratorium time. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Chris. Um, this is kind of going back several years, but I remember that there was a question about how many boats could be anchored outside of what is now the barge. Does And I think the Harbor Authority stepped in. Does the Harbor Authority have, have any... Um, point or in this argument at all, or are they pretty much non-regulatory? I don't believe the Harbor Authority has any authority. Uh, okay. Thank you. Ken, Ken can address that. Yeah, I would agree with that. The uh, the controversy over the boats uh, rafting off at, at the barge uh, was not dealt with at all by the Harbor Authority. It, it doesn't, as you say, it doesn't have authority <laughs> over right, that. Right. And, and that was more a hazard, a hazard of navigation issue that was addressed by, uh, actually, I believe the Corps of Engineers and D and Eagle were the final arbiters of that uh, situation, Chris. Uh, Mayor? Yes, Garnett. This is Garn. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get us to the motion. Um, motion to approve moratorium ordinance 210119-A as written. Second. Okay. Uh, comments regarding time period. I, I, I'm a little hesitant or about eight months. I think that, you know, may cause some angst a little bit in the community. There's also probably, uh, people wanting to reserve boat slips or marinas that may be a river queen type houseboat. And that may be, uh, problematic for uh, the business owner and, and, and this prospective slip holder. Um, yeah. Of course, that could be done if we even do it in a week, but I, I, I somehow like to address the, uh, the, the exist, existing uh, vessels in, in our harbor. And also it, that alone to me then uh, counteracts the time period of the of, of the ordinance, but uh, there a little more discussion about that or other input? No, Mayor, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think if we're gonna take an action like this, we need to make a decision and come up with regulations and standards fairly quickly because there are people that have, that have already, you know, probably making plans to go back to a boat that they've had for years uh, in the harbor that they reside on. So I think we owe it to the community to, to make a fairly quick um, decision on the ordinance and regulations and standards. So unless we can find a way to grandfather what's therein, or if we can move faster and try to commit to getting something in place by say Memorial Day, uh, Cliff said we have the option to extend if we can't get there, but I think we should put ourselves under a tighter time frame if uh, we're going to go this route. Um, so I, I support your concerns about eight months, because we, we, we do retain the option to go to eight or nine or longer if we need to, but I think we should try to to be more to be more timely given that summer's, you know, coming. Okay. To be honest with you, my thought was 100 days from, from the passage, which, so uh, from the date of publishing or effective date. Is there any way we can can maybe clean up the definition of these vessels? It, it just seems to be so broad that someone could look at that and say, "Hey, that, that includes my fifty foot, you know, motor yacht." And uh, Mayor, this is th- this is yeah. Cliff. In the short run, Jeff Slug and I have not been able to clean that up. You know, the the problem is. 
you know, I, I know some houseboats, council people would find objectionable and others wouldn't, which is why in the substantive ordinance, of course, we've, we've, we've really got to drill down on that. But, um, you know, some people call them houseboats, some people call them liveaboards. So that, that, that's what's tough. And again, I guess for now, the best answer I have is still that limiting last line about it is designed or used primarily for living as a house or domicile rather than for water transportation or recreational purposes. And, and again, if we find, you know, if, even in a month, if we find that it, the nets cast too wide and we can come up with a better definition, this can be amended. Any other any other thoughts about the, the, the time frame or the definitions? I well, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, you know, Scott makes a good argument about shortening the time frame. Uh, I think a hundred days is too short. Uh, we got to put a lot of thought into this, but I think the Memorial Day deadline would be appropriate. Um, insofar as the definition, I I think unless until we really drill down on this stuff. I, I don't know that there's any better way to define uh, a houseboat of, um, than what we already have in this proposal. Okay. Other comments? I, I'd still rather roll the dice with the self propulsion thing. Uh, part at least, you know, as, you know, to, to again, further define. Uh, and I get it. Someone could just weld a, a little bracket on the back with a, put a 50 horse motor and try to push these things up and down the river. But uh, yeah. that seems a little, uh, you know, Hard to believe, but I suppose they could. Uh, I just, uh, I'm just concerned about the definition of the houseboat because we think of houseboats as, you know, the River Queen houseboat built right here in Douglas, Michigan. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Can we add? Yeah. Yes, Scott. I mean, I, I understand your concern, and I think that's part of creating the ordinance. Um, you know, what what a better definition of these floating structures is. Um, I, I mean, I think the two big things that I worry about are protecting the environment, protecting the lake, and people's safety. So I think, you know, things like, you know, is a vessel that's Coast Guard approved that has a registration, that has the necessary safety equipment, that has the necessary equipment to make sure that uh, sewage is being pumped out and pumped offshore. Uh, the electrical system is safe. Um, it's, it's protected against fire. We would want a, a view, a view from the uh, fire department or best practices from the Coast Guard in terms of what a safe vessel is. So, I think that's part of the ordinance creation process. So, I, 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 I think what the attorneys have done is wise in terms of keeping it broad for now until we fine tune our ordinance. And I, and I do think we will find precedents out there on the coasts down in Florida out in the Northwest that we can use to guide us as we create the ordinance. So I'm, I'm okay with it being broad for now, but I do think we need to move quickly. Okay. All right. Uh, and the motion to say five months instead of eight months. We can go with any amount period. I think, I think eight is too long. Um, like I said, 100 days got us to, to May 1st. So you could add, you know, a day or number of months, you know, four months gets you to what? May 21st. Uh, Cindy, uh, can you give us a time frame of, have you given any thought of uh, the time frame to enact such an ordinance mm -hmm. yourself with what work you've done so far or not? Thank you, Mayor. Um, the biggest question about time frame is whether or not it has it's a zoning ordinance or a regulatory ordinance. A zoning ordinance obviously takes longer because we have to do public hearings with the planning commission. 
Um, and the notice for those public hearings are almost a full month because our newspaper only publishes once a week. So that's kind of time consuming, but if it's a general regulatory ordinance, it could be done relatively quickly if we can come to some decisions on what the regulations will be. Um, it, could be it could be done in three months. I think that's kind of pushing the, the limit, but five months is certainly reasonable. And once we get that regulatory ordinance worked out, the moratorium could then be lifted. So it, if it takes 100 days to do the, the regulatory ordinance, we could just lift the moratorium and it would go away. So the work done on a regulatory ordinance is primarily your responsibility working with uh, the, the city attorney as opposed to uh, running it through the planning commission with public hearings and discussion and so on and so forth. Is that what I'm that's getting? Correct. That's correct. That would be most of my responsibility with input from council because I, I don't, I can't read your minds yet. I try, but it doesn't always work that well. But um, yeah, it could be done relatively quickly. Mayor, th th this is Cliff. Yes. Can I respond briefly? Yes, please do. It, 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 it seems that the concern about length of time is primarily based on existing lawful houseboats. So an, another possibility might be that um, if you have to go longer, whether initially or you extend it, that we that we do come up with a grandparent clause that's added to the moratorium ordinance, you know, in the next few weeks. I, I don't hear council people indicating that they're really concerned about houseboats that haven't been built yet not being able to be used this summer. It's it's more of, okay, how many lawfully existing ones are there out there and we don't want to impede them unduly? Well, well, that or someone coming who's new to our community who just happens to have a river queen that's moving in. They're not, they're not grandfathered in because they weren't here in the summer, but they have a, uh, you know, a vessel that's uh, that complies with, you know, the same type of a vessel. So, um, but that's something that can be worked out here in the next, I think, as an initial step in the review process. Um, I mean, we all know what we want to stop, okay? Yeah, it's kind of like, we know it when we see it, it's just kind of hard to define it and put it into something that's legal and enforceable and, and going to stand up to, to litigation. Um, I mean, so in my mind, I, I, the, the, so we all know what, I think we all know what we want to do. It's the floating home concept, the floating cottages, uh, as they exist. I don't even believe they need to be registered with the state of Michigan. If, if they're not a moving boat, I don't think they come under any type of requirement to get titled or, or registered or anything else that anybody else who has a 15 foot motorboat has to go through. Likewise, they don't have to get registered with the, with the city regarding uh, uh, review by the fire, fire department for safety issues to get registered as a, a, a short term rental. Uh, they don't even pay taxes on them. Okay. Whereas all short term rentals at least pay property taxes. Albeit if the boat is in a condo slip, the water part of the slip is property tax. So I, I you know, the more you think that e each time you discuss something, so another issue comes up relative to these, 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 these things. Um, so that being said, we've got a motion on the table. Uh, is there any choice, you know, there, there, there's been an offer between 100 days on the on the moratorium period to five months to keep it at eight months. Let's kind of zero in on the, on the, on the time period of this thing. So a little more discussion with that council, please. Mayor, how about, yes. how about five months with the option to extend if we can't get a good ordinance in place? 
I would support that. I would. Okay. Five months brings you to mid June. Uh, it, I, I really think we're going to wrap this up. I, I, I think that uh, it's just incumbent upon us in support of our businesses and our, our boating community to, to, to wrap this, to wrap this thing up uh, quicker than that. Um, Mayor, this is Garn. So sure. then I'd like to, I'd like to amend my motion to approve this moratorium with the following modica modification to five months, the decisions made in five months. Okay. Can you add this second? Do you uh, support that? Ken? Okay, I think that was a yes. Okay, uh, so we have a motion on, on, on the table uh, to adopt the ordinance as presented other than changing the moratorium period from uh, eight months to five months. Any further discussion from council? I guess I'm just with you, Mayor, and thinking we need to have it done before Memorial Day. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you're in that, Cindy? <laughs> I'm here in that. I'm right. buying my cot to put in my office today. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, also, we got the benefit of having our uh, new city manager uh, participating, or at least uh, observing this this meeting. Uh, my understanding that he has run into some similar issues in uh, up in Wisconsin where he's at. So uh, he'll certainly, uh, be taking the lead for us once he once he reports to duty on February first. Uh, any more comment? One more time around council before we call the issue. Uh, if none, Aaron, would you please call the roll on the motion? Dean. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Lewis. Yes. Trester. Yes. Sorry. Now, Dean. Yes. Leo is not present. Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Ann Beckin? Yes. Yeah. So uh, that being said, um, I guess, Cliff, how do you, how I'd like you and, and, and Cindy to just comment on the next expedited steps, please. Well, we, we've got a draft uh, that's probably three quarters done and and Cindy will have that in the next week and so we'll we'll tweak that based on today's discussion and so on and try to get it to the council just shortly thereafter okay all right uh, another question for you you clip we didn't address it in this motion but if if in the next 30 days or 60 days or 10 days, we want to revise this moratorium to uh, grandfather in existing vessels as of a certain date in 2020. Is, is that something that can be done easily? Yes. Okay. And, and, and I suspect, Mayor, this is just a wild hunch that you're going to get a lot of comments over the next couple of weeks. So some of them might be insightful and that might help us not only with regard to grandparenting, but maybe the definition mm -hmm. um, also, even for the moratorium ordinance. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, on behalf of the council and ask that you prepare uh, such an addendum, uh, allowing these, these vessels that were you know, previously in the Harbor uh, at some date in, you know, 2020, whatever date, seven, one, eight, one, something like that. Um, be glad I, to do so again again it it's not binding but it's something that uh, we can consider and if you can also give us the proper uh, procedure how to implement it with the existing uh, moratorium ordinance uh, I'd appreciate it anything else we would we'd Go be ahead. happy to mr. mayor okay anything else that you have comments on sir I, I do not I uh, just want to thank the council for their time today okay all right Thank you. Uh, Cindy, uh, any, any further comments? Not at this time until we start looking at that substantive ordinance. I think we've got it covered. 
we can move forward and I will not issue any permits or licenses for any vessel that is to be used as a residence or domicile and not for um, recreational use or water transport. Okay, all right. All right, thank you. If uh, uh, we'll now open it up to uh, public comment. Uh, again, if you wish to address the council, uh, please identify yourself with your name and your uh, residence, community residence, and uh, limit your comments to three minutes. And I see Mr. Medler out there, sir. This is ill advised. The definition that you've adopted today includes all of the boats that everybody uses as a summer home docked in every dock. What I don't understand is 2007, the Michigan Appellate Court ruled that these were not vessels, that these were homes, subject to the local ordinances with regard to the building of homes. And their ordinance in Napoleon Township reads exactly like ours. In 2013, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled and defined that these kinds of structures were not vessels, they were homes. And if you want an ordinance where they prohibited these kinds of structures, why don't you look at the Monroe County of Florida ordinance that was adopted prohibiting these? Because they took into account the U.S. Supreme Court decision, which determined that these they are home. And there are currently five of these structures under construction at Tower Marine, and they're going to be stocked down by the chain ferry. So I think what you did today makes no sense based on the law or prohibiting all of these boats that are used as people's homes in the summer, docked at Coral Gables, at the Yacht Club, at the Singapore Yacht Club, and everywhere else, illegal. And then you've done it for so long that it's going to destroy that business. But on the other hand, you're not going to enforce it. So you're going to enforce it against Doom Ridge? That's going to get you a lawsuit. So if you want an ordinance that you can follow and follow the U.S. Supreme Court decision, I suggest you look at the Monroe County Ordinance in Florida. Okay, you were, your, your volume was down a bit. We pr probably got that a little bit in spurts or, you know, so uh, I think we got the gist of it. Uh, I'm sure that... Uh, uh, our city attorney also got the gist of some of your comments. They're, they're appreciated. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Chair, Brenda yes. Marcy has had her hand raised. Who's that? Brenda Marcy. Okay. All right. And I also see uh, uh, Jane Underwood there. Uh, Brenda, would you? Hi. Go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Am I unmuted? You're good. I am so glad you are looking into this. Um, I never, I have a boat at Singapore. First of all, we don't have any of those boats at that yacht club. So I just want to clarify the previous man's point. Um, I watched, there is a boat at Sargent that it's one of these boats that you're talking about. And all of a sudden there's an addition on the top. So needless to say, none of the boats around them can see anything, but I started imagining, you know, what you can do with these things and, and, the issues they would cause. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really glad that you're looking into it. And, and Cindy, I'll, if you end up developing an ordinance, then uh, I, I can help you with that because there's other things they didn't, the lawyers didn't mention, like um, potential for ESD, death by electrical shock. And there's just a lot of safety issues. For example, we, we get a Coast Guard inspection every year. Um, so there is so much to consider, but uh, I am, I'm so glad you're doing this because I see, and especially as the previous man just said, the ones right along the, the river there. Can you imagine? Three stories, four stories. Um, anyway, so I just wanted you to know that I'm, I'm glad I logged in and I am really glad you're looking at this issue. I think it's really important. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can you, can you state your, uh, oh, I'm sorry. residence? I, we yeah. all know you're live in Saga Township. I'm in the township, but... uh, 3221 Lorimer Lane. All righty, thank you for your Sorry. comment. Yeah. Jane? 
Yes, I would like to second what the previous woman said. I am so glad the council is on this. Um, we all, well, some of us, Mark, you and I, maybe the only ones who remember when there were lots of river queens around. Yep. Uh, they were great on the river. I One day I was out on the lake on one and um, it was a little choppy, but I think we need to really watch what is happening to our riverfront. We are losing so much of our view and this concerns me. I'm also wondering what's going on regarding the fence down by the ferry. Again, I'm just afraid that there's going to be an accident with people getting off the ferry, children running out to the road and cars coming, not being able to see them. Can anyone answer anything about the fence? Uh, Karen, you wanna, we, we had a talk about this specific question if it came up and I think Karen has a prepared answer. She's muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. I was unmuted and I muted myself. Um, I do not have a prepared answer, but we are working on it. Um, I've let the uh, developers know that they are in violation of our ordinance. I've got a meeting scheduled with them tomorrow. So stay tuned. I will, <laughs> in the comfort of my living room. Right, right. It's also in the hands of the city attorneys. Uh, and so there's also other options that uh, uh, are, are potential, you know, in, in, in out there in the future. Uh, do we have any other comments from the public this morning? Aaron, you see anyone? I do not, sir. Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, council, one more stab, anything to, anything to share, any comment you'd like to make? Before we uh, wrap this up this morning. Okay, I, I want to uh, thank all the council people. This, this is kind of a little bit on the unprecedented side. I have to agree with Gary Medler on that point. I, after all these years, I can only imagine maybe once or twice we've had a, an emergency meeting. But, but I think that uh, if we're going to, we're, we're better off erring on the side of caution uh, regarding this, this, this subject and uh, uh, give ourselves some, some time to, to, to get our arms around it. And so uh, if that, uh, that's all we have this morning, thanks everybody for taking time from your day. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mayor, I move we adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Truster supported by Dean to adjourn the meeting. The clerk, please call a roll on the motion. Crestor? Yes. Dean? Yes. Leo's not here. Lewis? Yes. Uh, Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Beckin? Yes. Again, thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you later. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Cliff. Thanks, all.